I really wanted to see in a different game uh, that sort of asked the same question in a slightly different way, what the foxes would do. Uh, so we came up with a new way uh, to look at a larger population of foxes so that we didn't have to do any kind of exposure for the control line. Uh, and then we could really test them with uh, the very same experience. And also, uh, I didn't want to use food because it just ended up the population of foxes, they are very sensitive and their appetite fluctuates a lot. And so if I could find a game where there was no food involved, uh, that meant I could uh, actually test them, not for some kind of uh, food reward, as we do in all the other games, but I could actually look at just a social reward. Um, and would they, what would their preference be? And would they use human gestures even when uh, it wasn't for food? So the game was very simple. You can see that the, the person in this diagram is touching uh, one of the two little toys there. And there was like a, a little um, piece of metal that you could touch on each toy and it would make a sound, kind of a um, you know, boing boing sound as you touched it. And that would of course potentially attract the attention of a fox who's watching. And when that toy in the beginning, when you touch it, it was out of reach, but then you just would push it within reach of the fox. And then they had the choice of, did they wanna to touch the toy that you touched or they could touch an identical toy on the other end of the table that you had not touched. We knew from previous experience that they love to play with these toys. And so it gave us a really good opportunity to see which toy would they play with and what was their first choice um, when you touched one of the two toys. Now we did a control. Uh, we also looked at what happens if you don't touch the toy? What happens if a feather touches one of the toys? So this is a non-social uh, or it, at least it's a non-human cue. And the question was, would the foxes still be interested in touching uh, the same toy that a feather touched or not? Uh, and, and the results were really interesting because it really mattered which population we looked at. So here is a picture of touching one of the two toys and you can see the fox watching. And then there's the feather uh, touching one of the two toys and this is what it would have looked like when we played the games. And here are two populations of foxes, the top being the experimental line and the bottom being the control line. And what we found was that when the experimental population was shown a person touching one of the two toys, they had a very strong preference to touch the same toy that you touch. Whereas if they saw a feather touch the toy, they didn't really choose that toy, they would just choose at chance. And we found the exact opposite in the control line. The control line had no interest in touching a toy that you touched. They were much more interested in touching the toy that the feather touched. So even though these populations are raised on the exact same uh, food in the exact same way, uh, they live uh, together essentially, uh, they have this very different response to human gestures versus a feather. And it can only be explained by the selection for interest and against aggression in the experimental line. So at this point, I was really convinced that we were looking at something uh, that was a real difference between these two populations. And I felt like we had a really good handle on what may have driven not just the change that we see here in the domesticated foxes that we know what the selection pressure is, but also in our best friend's dogs. So the foxes have really taught us that you can have selection against aggression lead to changes in morphology, physiology, behavior, but also in potentially psychology and the preferences that animals show towards human gestures um, versus non-human things. Uh, and I think it really helps potentially uh, support the domestication hypothesis, the idea that dogs actually experience something very similar. As early wolves started to evolve into dogs, I don't think it was that humans went, as we talked about earlier in, the, uh, in, in uh, lecture two, I don't think humans went and said, oh, it isn't a great idea to bring some wolves in and have them together with our kids as we go hunt and gather. I think it was more likely that dogs actually, or I should say early wolves chose us, that wolves started living close to us, that they started relying on people, and that the only wolves that could do that were the wolves that weren't aggressive, that weren't fearful, were actually interested in people. And what you see with the Belayev uh, fox experiment is when you start selecting a canid, 
to be friendly and interested in people, you end up with a fox like this that has piebald coat, a, high, a very high frequency in the population of curly tails, and all sorts of other changes, including being very good at reading human gestures. So I think the foxes really, for me, solve the mystery of why dogs are remarkable at using human gestures. It was they were selected to be interested in people and they were selected to um, want to interact with people and that allows them to use the old cognitive skills that we see in wolves in using uh, gestures uh, or I shouldn't say gestures but using social cues with each other but they can use it in a new context. They can use it now with people. They're not afraid of people. They're not um, aggressive towards people. They want to actually use the same skills they use with each other with their same species um, social partners they want to use it with people but it ends up that people are obviously using gestures and they're um, intentionally communicating and trying to help in a way that, um, that an individual of your same species wouldn't and because you're interested and then because you're interacting with people you as a species start to use a new type of communicative behavior and potentially develop an understanding of communicative intention. In summary, uh, the Russian geneticist led by Dmitry Belayev and Ludmila Trut and Irene Plyas Nina selected a population of foxes to be interested and friendly towards humans. This experimental line was compared to a control line that was not selected based on their behavior towards humans. Uh, the experimental line shows the expected behavioral change. They're interested in people, not fear, fearful. Uh, but they also showed a high degree of accidental changes, including to morphology uh, and changes uh, beyond that that are typically seen in domesticated animals, things like floppy ears, curly tails. The experimental populations, based on my own work, uh, working with my colleagues in Russia, they also, interestingly enough, use human gestures more than the control line, even though they were never selected based on this trait. So what then got us excited was, remember, I promised you we were going to bring this back to humans. What does this mean for us? Is it that if you select against aggression and for interest, not just in uh, dogs, uh, wolves, and foxes, what about in primates or even humans? What would it mean for us? So that's what we'll address next.